Breaking news today as the Knolls get a big pickup on the offensive line as they grab a commitment for their 2024 class. Ty Hilton picked the Seminoles over both the Gators and Hurricanes. Before the rivals try to spin this as anything other than a miss, let's talk about where Hilton has been this month. The first weekend of the month, he spent in Happy Valley at Penn State. The very next weekend, he visited Miami. And then prior to being on FSU's campus on the 23rd through the 25th, he was at UF. He's actually visited UF four times this spring and summer. That's more than he's visited any other program in the country. But despite massive attempts by both UF and Miami to get him in their class, Alex Atkins locked him up, and the Knowles have a great prospect to develop and hopefully work toward being a key piece of their offensive line. Now, Hilton is a 6'4", 272-pound offensive lineman. He plays tackle in Oviedo, Florida. He's rated a three-star by both On3 and 247 Sports. The On3 industry has him as the 59th best offensive tackle in the country. I know there are times we love to look at star ratings and then immediately make a judgment on how good a kid is or how good a kid isn't. A lot of times if a kid is a blue chip prospect, we say, oh, he's great. If he's a three star or below, we like to say that the kid is no good. That is certainly not the case here. There is a massive reason that both Miami and Florida were in on this kid uh, from the get go and why they really, really wanted to pull him in. Also, another offensive line powerhouse in Penn State, playing there in the Big Ten, really wanted to pull this kid in as well as they used an official visit, and he did visit earlier in the month. He's got a great frame. We mentioned his size at 6'4". He's a big kid, got some room to put on a little bit more weight. Um, From his offers and his visits, you can see why the entire Big Three wanted him. But his movement is really, really solid. I don't necessarily think he's a day one guy, but I do think that he could absolutely project into a solid offensive lineman. He may move over to guard at some point, but he does use his hands really, really well. He moves well. He does have that bit of nastiness that you look for in an offensive lineman. He certainly is the kind of guy that likes to finish plays at the till the whistle. One of the better players on his team in one of the higher classifications in the state of Florida. He's really, really good. He could certainly use some improvement, some development on technique. Obviously, his footwork I like at the high school level, but I think that that can improve. I think under Alex Atkins and in this offense, it certainly will. Atkins does a phenomenal job with a couple of things. I want to talk about both those things as soon as I give some love to our friends over at Garnet and Gold. You guys have been buying these jerseys off the shelves, literally and figuratively, both going in store and picking them up online. If you order them online, you can save 15%. Use code NOSLAW. That's N O S L A W to get your limited edition or your standard white or Garnet jersey from GarnetandGold.com. Listen, don't shop anywhere else. That's where I got this hat behind me. It's where I got the football. GarnetandGold.com, your one-stop shop for all things FSU athletic gear and beyond. All right, Atkins does a phenomenal job in both evaluating and development. And they know that they could just pick up a guy out of the portal at any point, which they've had great success with. There's no reason to think that if Atkins and company did not think that this kid would end up being a good player on the team, that they would reach for a prospect just to reach. Again, it's not just Atkins' you know, idea of, of what's going to be a really, really good player or what they might try to look for. I think you look at the rest of the big three. Coach Mirabel down in Miami does a really, really good job. Florida has two offensive line coaches, and they were really heavy on this guy too. I think that it really does prove – what they are looking for. And again, a big bodied kid could potentially play tackle for the Knowles at some point, could slide inside, I believe. We'll see, but I do really like the pickup. And as we show you some of his highlights, I think you'll be pretty happy and pleased with watching what you see as well. We've spoken on this a little bit, but some people had some questions about the last visit strategy for the Norvell staff. Uh, Due to what happened probably with Stevenson and Zandamela, This situation and the last visit strategy certainly paid off here with Hilton. 
um, worked out very well in Florida State's favor. He went down to Miami. He was at Florida. And by taking his last visit to Florida State, I certainly think that helped Florida State seal the deal and pull him in. Now, you look at other situations like the Zandamella or the Stevenson situation. A lot of people think, oh, if, maybe if they had visited us first or maybe if they had come here first, we wouldn't have ended up losing them. Certainly a case of that and certainly a situation where that could be the case. I think you've got to look at situations outside of what typically one-offs are. And if Zandamella's major motivation for leaving was maybe an NIL deal, maybe some other things going on, I don't think him visiting Florida State earlier would have made an impact. You look at where um, Stevenson says that academics were kind of his driving force, and that's kind of been reported. I don't know that fl visiting Florida State earlier would have made a big difference. But at the end of the day, you're going to get some guys, and you're going to lose some guys based on when they visit. There's just no way around that. And there's no one-size-all method that fits college football recruiting. Uh, Florida State had their big visit weekend the same weekend that Alabama did and Georgia did and Ohio State did. And I didn't see anyone you know, complaining from those fan bases that the visits were happening too late. And, and so I do think that you've got to take everything into consideration when you look at stuff like this. But for those questioning the last visit strategy by Mike Norvell and his staff, I think you can point to the Hilton commitment and look at a situation where it absolutely paid off for Norvell and company. You're going to get some guys. You're going to lose some guys, as we talked about. But I think this was a good pickup for Norvell. And I think having him visit at the end of the month when they did is a big reason why they got him. He's talked about relationships. He's talked about Florida State being his dream school. I think that's really big as well. I think Florida State was able to kind of overcome that. A lot of times when you hear a kid say that, it kind of makes you worry about, hey, are they absolutely going to commit? Are they solid? Are they just saying that to hype us up? You know, Newberg at, over at On3 talked about how when a kid says they set the bar high, that's not a good thing. Hilton talked about Florida State being his dream school, and now he's committed to the Seminoles. I really like where this offensive line class is going to end up, and Atkins is stacking back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back good offensive line classes. And I think that you're, you've seen the offensive line in Tallahassee at Florida State completely flip on its head and be – I was talking about somebody about it today – an, a strength of this team, not a liability, not just an okay unit, an absolute strength of this team. A big pickup today with Ty Hilton is only going to help that. All in all, a really, really good day for Florida State. Again, as they land a three-star Ty Hilton out of Oviedo, Florida, over both the Caters and the Hurricanes. Again, don't let the rivals spin it. They absolutely wanted this kid, and they wanted to pick him up in their class. Their offensive line recruiting uh, last year for both of them was, was pretty good this year. They are missing on a lot and Alex Atkins stuffs both of them into another locker and we take home the prize. I got to get them to signing day. I know every time we do one of these commitment videos, you guys comment and say, Oh, it doesn't mean anything until they're signed their letter of intent. Well, guys get out of their national letter of intent too. So that doesn't mean anything. And with the transfer portal, just be happy for once that we got a big commitment. If you're a usual complainer there, want to know who might be next to commit. We'll break down everything to do with FSU recruiting. You can click a video right here to check it all out.